Greetings, everyone in Italy. My name is Marcus Redeker. I'm a historian, and I'm the author of this book, uh, El Piantagrane, a book about a man named Benjamin Lay, a very radical figure, born in 1682, uh, died in 1759, and in my view, maybe the most radical person on the planet uh, in those years. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about him today. Uh, I'd actually like to begin by expressing my solidarity um, for what everyone in Italy has been going through in recent weeks. I do hope the worst of this crisis is over, and uh, I wish all of you uh, good health. Uh, and a speedy recovery. So I wrote this book about Benjamin Lay, who was known primarily as an abolitionist, one of the very first people to oppose slavery worldwide and to demand the immediate emancipation of all enslaved people all around the world. He was one of the earliest to do this, and there was a tremendous amount of opposition to him in this time. He became uh, an opponent of slavery uh, really two full generations before an anti-slavery movement developed. But Benjamin Lay is actually part of a larger story. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that in order to put him and his life in context. Uh, Benjamin Lay was uh, really uh, an, ex an extraordinarily important figure in a larger world of radicalism around the Atlantic in the 17th and the 18th centuries. Uh, and in talking about this, I wanna summarize a couple of the ideas from uh, a book that I published uh, some years ago called The Many-Headed Hydra, uh, Sailors, Slaves, and the Hidden History of the Revolutionary Atlantic. Uh, this was co-written with Peter Linebaugh. And in that book, we argued that the English Revolution of the 1640s and 1650s produced a kind of radicalism that was extremely important, not only for that time, but for all subsequent history. A group of religious radicals, they were called the levelers, the diggers, the ranters, the seekers, and also the Quakers. Benjamin Lay was a Quaker although he was born later. These groups argued for an extraordinary array of really revolutionary ideas, uh, a vast expan expansion of uh, democracy in the society. The levelers were big proponents of democracy. They called for a return of the enclosed commons to the people. The diggers actually recaptured the commons and began to plant them. They also opposed slavery which to them meant not only racial slavery, but also uh, indentured servitude, the forced labor of people in armies and navies. Uh, they really stood for a, an extraordinarily broad array of, of very radical ideas. Equality, uh, communism with a small c, the idea that everyone should be cared for. Uh, these were ideas that were very, very common in those days. Now, this group of radicals suffered uh, defeat in 1660 when King Charles I came back to the crown, and they were then dispersed in defeat. Many of them went to Europe. Many of them went to North America. Many of them went to the Caribbean, especially, and they carried these radical ideas with them. Uh, I think this is really uh, very important for the subsequent history of resistance movements around the Atlantic. Now, uh, in this book, The Many-Headed Hydra, Peter Linebaugh and I talk about really the making of an Atlantic proletariat, uh, the workers who will create the wealth of this dynamic Atlantic world, which is, by the way, the cradle of capitalism. Uh, it is in the Atlantic where capitalism is formed. Uh, the creation of the world market really begins there. And so what you have in terms of the workers making this wealth, you have a, a motley crew, you might say, of uh, enslaved Africans, of uh, European indentured servants, multi-ethnic sailors and soldiers, convicts, market women, 
all kinds of people are really necessary to the making of this new capitalist system, which is genuinely international. Now, Benjamin Lay is part of this story in a really significant way. Benjamin Lay was an antinomian radical. Now, let me explain that. The, the, the radicals during the English Revolution were antinomians, and by that is meant they did not recognize man-made law as something they had to obey. Their thinking was rich people made these laws for their own protection, and we don't have to obey them. Now, there was a religious part of this because many of these people thought that they had a direct and democratic relationship to God and that they would obey what they understood to be God's laws, not the laws created by parliament or uh, kings or queens. Benjamin Lay inherited this tradition from the English Revolution, and he believed that none of the laws of slavery, made obviously by slave owners, had to be respected or obeyed. So he thought that slavery should be abolished immediately. Uh, and in so doing, he attached this antinomian radicalism to abolitionism, first to abolish the slave trade and eventually to abolish the entire um, system of slavery. Now, these ideas will spread in Europe and throughout the Americas. They're going to become very important to the abolition movement. What Lay actually managed to do was to link the English Revolution to a later revolutionary era called the Age of Revolution in Europe. Uh, including the American Revolution, the French Revolution, the Haitian Revolution, the Great Irish Rebellion, and many uh, moments of resistance throughout Europe and around the world, uh, Lay is really kind of a linchpin, a connector that makes all of this possible. And Benjamin Lay, it turns out, is more radical than even his extraordinary stance against slavery would suggest. He was not only race conscious, and believed in uh, immediate emancipation for all enslaved people. He was very class conscious. He had a great antipathy to accumulated wealth. He thought that was destroying uh, both Quakerism and society as a whole. Uh, he believed in gender equality. Uh, he believed that men and women were equal in the, in the eyes of God and should be equal in all other respects. And crucially, he was also environmentally aware and was known to say things like, beware of rich men who poison the world for gain, for profits. He could see this happening in his own day in the early 18th century. So what's really uh, extraordinary about Benjamin Lay is that this collection of ideas, um, that he's class conscious, race conscious, gender conscious, in environmentally conscious, he held all of these ideas simultaneously two and a half centuries ago. So in my view, that means that Benjamin Lay is truly a radical for our time. Uh, I hope you'll check out this book uh, and maybe take some inspiration from it. Uh, I think that we can learn from the past as we try to imagine a better path toward the future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.